If you go out through the Old West, you'll see a lot of tall buildings out there with a big machine in them. And usually that is the stamp mill. Now to run a stamp mill, you can run it with anything from a, an old hit or miss engine to a steam engine. This is a steam engine running here. We've got a shuttle valve working. Rolls a roller and into the mill. That's going to take a lot of horsepower to press rocks, pulverize them in a mill. So the gearing we have off of the engine is to drive a small wheel, belt drive, up to a big one. And there we develop our horsepower. Now from our big wheel, we're going to drive a camshaft. And those cams, when this is engaged, are going to lift those pistons up and down and they're going to pulverize the rock right down here in the stamp. And what's going to come out on here is ore and that can either go in, usually goes into an ore cart or into a sluice box or whatever, whatever method we're going to use to uh, separate the gold or tungsten or lead or whatever it is we're, we're after. Now all steam engines from the largest to the smallest work virtually the same way. We'll just take a look at this one here for the operation of it. What we have is steam coming up into a canister and the steam can come, uh, in this case, it's coming from a steam room down below. Come from a boiler right below the engine here or, or anywhere. As long as we get it to that canister, and we can produce power with a shuttle valve, which takes steam from one side of a valve to another. And this white valve here, this is a shuttle valve, and all we're doing is shuttling steam from one side of the piston to the other and uh, getting it to move and do work. And that's basically how any steam engine works. As long as we're developing power, we can take that power and run anything from a feed mill to a band saw. As long as we have a belt to turn a wheel and convert that to work energy, we can run any kind of implement, even sewing machines. Now one of the premier builders of agricultural machinery was Avery and especially of steam machinery. The Avery company built virtually all different types of seeding machines, anything you can think of. It's, it's just a forgotten name today but uh, they built some of the largest steam tractors that were ever produced or designed. You can compare their equipment with some of the rest. And powering the Avery is still our shuttle valved steam engine and through gearing 
we're just taking and, and using a, a small wheel to belt drive a big one or gear it and uh, through a succession of wheels developing horsepower with it. Now this big bolted boiler is really imposing. These two engines here are both peerless. This one's a 1907. And peerless has its the actual engine on the top of the machine. Again, we're just taking gearing, in this case on one wheel, to drive. Now this is a case steam engine. I used to sell case tractors, although I never sold anything like this. Uh, the oldest I was involved with was a case LA. Now this, uh, again, your steam engine is on the top and we're running a shuttle valve. There's your piston inside the cylinder. And an interesting thing about, uh, about steam tractors is with all the different wheels we have for driving, we can take and drive other machinery from a vast distance. case we got our hay baling operation going. Now when I was a young man, I was in an organization called DMLA. DMLA will teach a young person everything from citizenship to how to run a corporation and it certainly uh, made all the difference in my life. Uh, and one of the advisors was Lionel Barfield. Lionel Barfield was a captain on the building of the Panama Canal. He was born in the 1800s and lived to be almost 100 years old. But what they built the Panama Canal with was all with steam. And uh, it was these steam shovels that they would use out there and what's uh what it, what is uh interesting about steam technology especially with these is they'll be working out here and uh they hardly make a sound you very rarely hear them now this is coal in the coal bunker in the steam shovel and there's your boiler it's an upright boiler in this case and there's our steam Gauge. Good glory on right 100 there. North Carolina on the 1951. Tell us how much pressure we've got this to work one with. And it's uh, right it's live. Here. It's ready to go. You'll have to forgive me if I don't film a lot today. It's 105 degrees out here already, and I'm in the middle of a steam room with this uh, engine. But all we're doing. Again, like any uh, steam engine, we're simply pumping from one side of the piston to the next. Just a simple shuttle valve, and that's going to work our, uh, our mechanism to, to move dirt, our crane. What he's doing is opening up the valve, and he's supplying steam to the engine and he's watching for that machinery to tighten up here and start beginning to move the wheel. And there we go. Piston's working. Transfer valve. Transferring steam from one side of the piston to the other. Get an idea of the size of this. Uh, 
where Don Juan's is, you go to that, like, like if Don Juan's is on the left, These are our transfer valves. Now we move to some of the most powerful steam engines of all on the locomotives. And the uh, steam locomotives are much more powerful engine per engine than the uh, than diesel. In the 50s, General Electric began paying off the politicians to kill off uh, steam technology, kind of like they're doing today with a light bulb. And uh, as a result, we have diesel. Of course, with a light bulb, they're taking and replacing uh, a 20 cent bulb you can have with one you have to buy for five to fifty dollars. Same thing. Take a look at how this works. And we're simply going to take. Now we're simply going to take steam from the boiler here, this big long boiler, and drive it into our two pistons to either side of it. And then that'll drive our walking beam. Turn the wheel, and off we go. And all this valve, all this valve works all that's doing is simply taking steam and settling it from one side to the other it's very simple now he's taking and he's opening the valve into our pistons he's opening up the steam vent that's gonna get right into the pistons here Pressurizing the piston. Get her rolling here a little bit. And there we go. Now the mother side of the family were Sawyers. Uh, that's where we come from. That's what we did. And this would be a typical steam engine that would run one of the sawmills. If you ever come across a big concrete pad out in the woods and wonder what the heck was that all about, well, that was where the steam engine was located. Typically, these were installed on a concrete pad and they'd be moved from one location to the next as they logged out the area. Now, there's the actual engine sitting on top of the boiler and it works just the same way that we uh, described all the other steam engines. And we're just taking a leather belt. When you see these belts stapled together, they're actually buffalo hide. The buffalo hides, uh, they were shot to the extent that uh, buffalo belts were still being used. Uh, when I was a, a young man, uh, we used them on our old Case DO tractors up until the early 70s. Now we're running a, a sawmill operation here and we're transferring our lumber back and forth on nothing but a railway system. And we're taking our rough wood and we're turning it into finished lumber with the steam engine. Nothing to do with uh, steam engines, but certainly racing is uh, 
a whole different world today. I mean, it was you and the car and God, and that was the body. 